Está muy bien, no sabía que iba a ser pero no no va a presentar hoy con sí sí pero más que no quieres y ya son varios si quieres si los expertos si no las chicas ya son varios pero está por ver que no me tiro a la no me tengo no no ¿Cómo? No, si ya De todas maneras, la recuperación. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I am uh, the chairman of this session. My name is Arturo Vera. And this time we will, uh, uh, I will be the chairman of this session that is called Biomedical Engineering, Biomedic, Biomedics, Measurement Systems. And we have three presentations. Every presentation will last uh, 20 minutes. So we have uh, 15 minutes for the presentation and, and five minutes for uh, questions and answers. So let's start with the first presentation that is called Hydration Scale During the Maturation Cycle Using Bioimpedance for Bladder Monitoring, a pilot study that will be presented by uh, Fausto Cordova Manso. Uh, good morning, everyone. So let's start with my presentation. We need some introduction. Uh, uh, the bioimpedance. The bioimpedance is a uh, first thing. My main project is about uh, bladder monitoring. I do use near infrared spectroscopy and now invasive optical technique that can measure hemodynamics, and with this, create some oxygenation patterns. And we want to include another technique because the place where the, this near infrared sensor is placed is at the supra pubis zone. And this is the same place where, for example, the transducer of a ultrasound technique is placed, is also placed. So 
you may see that they 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 both compete for the same anatomic place. That's why we want to monitor total water and body using other techniques. This is where uh, bioimpedance is uh, introduced. Um, bioelectrical impedance, BI, uh, measures the electrical resistance of the body. Uh, it is possible to the injection of several sinusoidal, sinusoidal waves. And for example, there are several innovations in this field. Some researchers uh, already manufacture a complex PI system for continuous blood pressure monitoring. And particularly in my, in my um, main project, they are already using bioelectrical impedance measurement during the attribution cycle in order to monitor the volume changes in the blood. <clears throat> However, these advances allow analysis of intra or extracellular free shifts during all the maturation cycle. And the main question here was, is it possible to monitor bladder, bladder volume, to monitor bladder using hydration status? Hydration status, as you may think, is the electrical response, the electrical parameters computed using by impedance. Uh, related with uh, hydration ratio, total fat free water, etc. So we want to, this is our hypothesis. Is, is it possible to monitor if I drink, if I intake a liter of water, it would be reflected in these measurements? So uh, we performed the methodology below where the participants were all, um, were three persons. These three persons, um, uh, they, they are not affected with any low urinary tract in the disorder, so they are healthy for or, or, or volts. And uh, these are the characteristics of this uh, these are kids. We can see that um, subject one and two, subject one and two have the same range of age, uh, but also, subject three and two shares the same um, body mass index range. So, these participants perform uh, by, by instrumentation measurement using the Pioli Expert Pinch. This device is placed in the Mayolis one and you hold it with your hand. So, you close the circuit, the device injects a sinusoidal weight. At different frequencies, and with the relation of this uh, response in amplitude and phase shift, we can obtain the hydration parameters. And uh, the device is shown in the figure, in the upper figure. And um, with this in mind, we we measure, uh, we continue, we perform a, a continuous measurement of the bladder. Of the, of the hydration status. So uh, we took measurements every 10 to 15 minutes in order to obtain a continuous uh, bioimpedance measurement. And of course, the results reflect the hydration related parameters. However, the results are not as intuitive uh, as we can uh, think. For example, we have these three, um, these three types of the intracellular water. And as you may see, it is it, 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 uh, it is counterintuitive because if we already boil it, if we boil urine, the body, we do expect uh, a decrease of, of intracellular water. However, in the most of the results, there is a rise of the water, of the intracellular water. And this behavior is uh, repeatable in the next uh, results. This has a next uh, physiological explanation related with the uh, hydrodynamics in the body. When we void water, when we free water of the body, the body did not uh, decrease the water. 
it actually stores even more uh, in order to, to 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 keep the in order to keep the iteration the iteration steps. For example, uh, in the next so cellular water, it's the same result. Uh, we do expect that actually a decrease of the water is what we think now. And we void water, right? There's a decrease of it. However, it is contraintuitive. And uh, this is a uh, uh, but some some parameters reflect actually this uh, this behavior. For example, uh, hydration rate, as you may see, it is uh, this correspond with the with the expected behavior, as I already said, our values of water. However, why the subject number two is uh, reports a decrease on the the regulation rate, right? And it is because, particularly, this subject, and this is where the measures get a little more complex than we think. Because it's not like, oh, I drink a, I intake a liter of water, then a liter of water is going to be reflected in the like, interval measurements. Now, it is more complex because, for example, uh, as you may see, there is an abrupt change in the in the subject number two. Uh, this is explained. Actually, by another physiological phenomenon that is the bad quality of protein in the muscle of the subject number two. And you will say, uh, wait a minute, we want to we want to monitor the the volume, we want to monitor the water changes in the body. Why are you telling me about the quality of protein in the muscle? Right? Because as, as we perform a whole body by the internet measurement, it, it is involved in this kind of, of of analysis. And I'm gonna uh, as you as you may see this uh, with this results we actually obtain um, a statistical parameters. However uh, they they do reflect some some interesting things. For example in this in this equation of fat free water uh, graph, we can see that <laughs> um, despite all the behind results, despite of the previous results we have shown where the, there is a degree an increase uh, after we bought urine, we follow exactly the uh, respected, respected phenomenon. And there are some parameters that actually do reflect the what we expect uh, an increase of water as we avoid uh, urine. Another parameter that is interesting at least is the face angle. This um, require even more study, uh, even more research, because actually the few articles available of this face angle uh, parameter are not reported. They do not um, have found already the relation with, uh, with with the health of the subject. For example, uh, a normal value of phase angle is around 8 to 8.5 uh, degrees. However, uh, as we will as we will see, the subject number three that was the the, the oldest of the three subjects uh, report around 7 degrees of the so. Uh, this at least is, is interesting to already uh, cluster the results to to have the differenti differentiation of the, of the results. Uh, the two graphs, the upper graphs, the upper subject two and three and one, uh, share the same age range. So the values of the phase angle are similar. And with this in mind. And as you may think, it's not as easy as we are, as I already said, it's not as easy to respond to this question. Is it possible to perform by impedance measurement to know how do the water in the body changes during the nutrition cycle? It is not. It is quite uh, more complex. And of course, uh, by impedance can detect significant changes in migration status uh, during the nutrition cycle. It, it, it can, as we already saw, the, 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 the values reported, the results reported, of course, reflect 
digression stairs, but it is not uh, this easy. This is it is not that uh, simple to to relate these parameters with the changes in in UI. Okay. However, there are some some parameters, for example, the fixed angle, the factory water, that can reflect and appear feasible, providing valuable insights to the fluid distribution dynamics. And other thing to discuss is that some parameters exhibit some associations with the body of process, other ones do not. So there is that. Yeah, we spec, with respect, uh, a decrease in water, a decrease in hydration rate after boiling, and this did not happen. You know, the hydrodynamics inside the body uh, is a uh, really more complex uh, phenomena, physiological phenomenon. And finally, future studies require even a larger sample uh, to validate these results, because the main objective of this uh, paper was to as, an, as, a, as the pilot study, it is to respond to this, this, to respond to this question. It is possible to, it is possible to monitor bladder with my impedance assurance. So this is the result. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now we have time for questions. If you have a question, we can raise your hand. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your presentation. Uh, I would like to know what is the difference between subjects two and the other two subjects because it was obvious that in the results were like the opposite to the other two. What do you think is the difference? Thank you. Firstly, uh, as the professor already said, it is quite interesting, at least. Uh, can you return my like, 10 slides? Uh, yeah, in the interest of the yeah. So it is at least interesting to uh, observe the behavior of subject number two, because as you may see, he is the one with different model variation. This is reflected in the standard deviation, the variance of the aesthetical product of the subject number two. However, and yeah. because model is designed to store water, uh, the main function of it is to store water. And for example, after the mission, you you must keep water. You are now uh, a healthy subject keeps water, thanks water. Uh, the subject number two uh, do not we we perform this study. Um, I know subject number two personally. And he did not take his his meals at the right hour. I mean, uh, he do he do exercise, but uh, it would he did not eat well. I mean, the feeding habits are not okay. uh, healthy. So you you see that this guy and you see the healthy uh, strong, but. The quality of the as a muscle is not uh, as, uh, as healthy subject quality. But you didn't have any diagnosis previously no. from from no. your recordings. It, it, it would be desirable. Ah, exactly. Yes. yes. Uh, so that you know exactly, or you can explain exactly what is happening. Yeah. It would be desirable to to find. Uh, I didn't hear any message. Uh, are they all men or women no. or mixed? The last. The subject number three was here. At the age around the same age? Yeah, 46. No, she was older. She was the oldest of the age. So. Yes, that would be the side of the to explain. Yeah. Yeah, the main goal of this uh, study was actually to, to see if it was possible to perform it with a larger size. Uh, the promising results. I can conclude that yes, it is. But yeah, it needs some. This this really graphs. <laughs> this the old graph I presented with even more analysis, even more because they are quite interesting. For example, this what is this? And maybe the design of the protocol the recording that was supposed to be desirable to have the the restrictions and uh, uh, and who is going to be inside protocol. Yeah. 
sorry, sorry, I'm correct. But yeah, it, it is quite uh, short. But, um, pretty, pretty size. Another one, another one. Another one. Uh, yeah. Do they yeah. have any exclusion no. criteria? Mm -hmm. Okay. And for example, it is quite. Oh, it is true. Because uh, fasting, uh, the fasting condition in the subjects is desirable. And to breakfast, to, to, to have a meal, uh, actually changes the distribution of the, of these, uh, changes the distribution of all the molecules in the body. And for example, subject one and two, the same age, uh, they perform 10 hours up and up over <laughs> 10 hours of, uh, of fasting. Meanwhile, the sample number three just uh, half hour. Uh, uh, and as you said, it will be desirable to have uh, given a larger size of, of subjects around 24 to 26 each years old. And with the same hours of fasting, that means. Is it related with the inclusion? Criteria. So uh, you said that you um, take it into account the age, the gender. Is there any other inclusion criteria that you would like to include in your protocol? Ah, uh, furthermore, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In the future, yeah. yeah, in the future, um, it will be desirable that, for example, the age, the age <laughs> to obtain the, the same. Uh, it will be also desirable the same. Uh, Body mass index, uh, mm -hmm. yes. But H is one of the future which criteria we must consider. I think it's also about being an athlete or not. And the physical and and the criteria. Well, uh, I think that healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Doctor, mm -hmm. I made that. Uh -huh. I know the, the book. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I know the, the topic. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the future of this uh, work? Uh, to be honest, we want to have an, uh, an option to monitor blood. That's the thing why we do perform uh, impedance. However, there's a research opportunity of these results, especially in the face angle graph, as I already said. Ah, as a comment, I would like to uh, include like these uh, results, continuous body impedance measurements are not reported in the in the literature. Uh, you, you, uh, they perform body impedance measurement, previous exercise, you do exercise, and then they record once again, and that's the only that's the only. Uh, Results that are reported in the literature. Uh, continuous by impedance, it is not. So, uh, I, I was talking with you know, some physicians, and they said that, for example, uh, abnormal values, this uh, face angle here, okay. uh, are related with help more that we can complete. For example, uh, this physician. Look uh, by impedance measurement in a, in a patient that uh, died just the day before, just the day after, sorry. Uh, and the face angle value of that uh, of that uh, patient was around four. I mean, the whole of the normal value of face angle. Uh, it could be conscience, of course. However, uh, this required even more research. This particular uh, parameter, you, you other ones are okay, but this is like an enigma for everyone. No one knows <laughs> when this could be present. Thank you. Another question? No. If there is no more questions, so let's move to the next presentation. The next presentation is um, entitled Finite Element Model for Parametrization. Of adipose tissues, thickness to assess near infrared in, infrared beam penetration, a first approach that is presented also by uh, Fausto Romanzo, and is related to the, the 
Last stop. So, yeah. So, <laughs> hello once again. <laughs> here, here, as I already said, my main uh, project is to, to monitor ladder through non invasive optical techniques, for example, medium infrared spectroscopy. This is a complementary study I would like to include in further more research, for example, for example, in the introduction, we have that medium infrared spectroscopy is a is a non-invasive method that assess oxygen radiation and hemodynamics. How it is possible, right? There is an emitter or functional medium infrared spectroscopy and a detector. This Brownian trajectory of the of the beam uh, and the concentration of hemoglobin, oxy, oxygenated hemoglobin, and reduced hemoglobin uh, can oh, additionally apply in the uh, Lambert law uh, can obtain a concentration of these two chromophores. So uh, NIRS is affected by a lot of things. For example, if we are performing a NIRS measurement in the arm and we are stretching it, uh, it's going to be reflected that movement. So uh, one and the main one, one obstacle of this uh, technique is, for example, the thickness of adipose tissue, APT. As it is bigger, uh, the lower the signal is going to be. Uh, as the increased ATT, the reduce the signal strength through optical phenomena such as scattering and absorption. So, once again, Beard Lambert law follows an exponential attenuation of light. And if we do not obtain a certain level of intensity in the light okay, of the near infrared beam, these lectures are going to be awful. They are not good lectures due to the attenuation of the light. So in this study, we would like to, yeah, to determine a critical adipose tissue thickness in order to know uh, where, at, at what, uh, at which depth do the, do the nearest beam is absorbed at a 50% of the density. So the methodology we follow, uh, we, we, we design a two-model, a two-dimensional model. This is uh, our model. It contains epidermis, dermis, fat tissue, and muscle. And with these optical parameters, we design a 2D model in constant physics. And the interface we used was a radiated beam absorbing media. And, and this is used to simulate the attenuation and propagation of light to different semi transparent uh, materials. This is the Bill Lambert law, including actually the orientation of the beam. And one thing I must uh, warn you about this uh, interface is that yeah, the incident light of in a material have three particular uh, phenomena included there: reflection, scattering, and absorption. However, this interface do not consider is not considering the scattering and reflection. So. Uh, in the model, in the 2D model, we place the incident light just at the, at the top of the model and in the middle of it. With the, with the intensity power that uh, a sensor, that data sheet sensor reports. So uh, once we do design, once we uh, design the 2D model, we perform a mesh conversion, uh, a mesh conversion study in order to verify that the numerical solution converges at the total intensity at a determined depth as the mesh is refined. So with this, we perform a parametric study and we vary the adipose tissue thickness, the APT, from 1 to 50 millimeters. And right, uh, epidermis, dermis, and the other lawyers uh, were remain constant. And with this in mind, we, uh, as addition to this project, we, we implement a predictive model with related mass 
the in women and men. As you may see, if there are this is the term ATP included in those equations. And the main goal of this is to determine uh, which is the maximum percentage of fat of any subject to perform NIRS or not. So the results are as we follow. Yeah. We obtained the merge mesh convergence study. We can see that uh, we obtained it with six different sizes of the mesh, and the last two ones uh, obtain the same value of the intensity in the uh, in the same uh, obtain the same value of the intensity at the same at, at the same depth with two different sizes. However, one of those obtained a uh, higher value in time, a higher value in time. So. And that's why the previous one, the size number five, was selected. It is the optimal permission of the is the optimal numerical solution of the model. So with this uh, merge convergence, we obtain the computational results, and we saw that uh, the 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 beam was absorbed at fifty percent at a twenty seven. 0.285 millimeters. And if we subtract the epidermis and the dermis, uh, it's around 26.1. 26.1, this is the critical adipose tissue thickness. And for example, uh, with this value, we do apply the predicted models that relate that percentage with the adipose tissue thickness. And we Calculate all the, we computed all the maximum percentage for each group in, of height, and because these formulas occupied height as a term. So, for example, for a subject that uh, had a meter and 80 centimeters, the maximum percentage of fat he can obtain in order to participate in these nearest measurements is uh, 20. 30.2 percentage. And for example, uh, right, this equation represents the, the penetration of the beam at different uh, at different at different tissues. I don't know why this is displayed, but <laughs> we let's take attention to the equation here. In that equation, it is involved all the optical properties of the different layers. And we, if we solve this, this equation, including epidermis, dermis, and fat, and the fat layers, we can obtain some result. If we want to determine where the 50% of the initial beam intensity, uh, at what depth this occurs, if we solve that uh, equation, we obtain 26.1. Uh, this is actually the same result of the computational modeling. So, uh, the next one, please. Uh, adipose tissue thickness, the critical adipose tissue thickness we obtain, where the being is absorbing at 50%, is 26.1 millimeters. And uh, of course, this is, uh, this is not a, a complete result because we, we must consider other optical phenomena. Like our recent scattering reflection, this is just considered an absorption. Why? Because the interface in console is considered like a phenomenon. Simulation models provide valuable insights and they are useful for improve the patient eligibility criteria. For example, as I already said, uh, if if a determined if a determined subject uh, wants to participate in our nearest measurements, right? We must take this age. We put this value in the predictive model. And if he's over the maximum percentage of fat, it is not uh, considered for the nearest measurement. This is useful for, for eligibility criteria. And this is so. Thank you. Thank you. We have many time for questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but question, please. So, 
You have questions? Okay. Thank you again for your presentation. Um, I think about the other the works that have been reported in literature about this research. Yeah. They are, of course, uh, a lot of literature. Uh -huh. However, uh, there is not a consensus about which percentage of signal they want to report. I mean, they do report the, the attenuation and we obtain the same values because it follows a uh, dot base, a physical model, the peer Lambert law. However, they do not agree in, in which percentage of the signal is really. Uh, is you is useful. Um, for example, my sensor can report one over two to the 16 power. So ah microamperes. So it is a lot of zeros just before the the point. And that's it, that there's not a consensus in which percentage of the signal is useful for the nearest assurance. And do you think that this, uh, well, these works that you have been, uh, that you have seen reported are in other countries? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the prolific model. To affect uh, this kind of measurements depending on the uh, anatomical and physiological uh, characteristics, you can see which country we have different yeah. uh, characteristics. Your focus examples. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's actually give up. Yeah. <laughs> this model is uh, is uh, from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> this model is um was performed on Turkish populations, oh. middle middle adult age. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. And why did I use it? Because I did not found a model for Mexican population. Of course, we must use this uh, and this result twenty six point one uh, millimeters. It's going to vary across different populations, of course. Exactly. Of course. Across the country, even in the yeah. north and the south, are going to be different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So these these results uh, will work for a Turkish middle aged population. <laughs> and I did I did use this uh, flag model because I tried to find a predictive model that relates uh, fat percentage with ATT. Mexican population and that's fine. And actually, yeah, uh, an additional comment uh, that about a question that you know, my professor uh, that told me asked me was that uh, if this was in which part of the body, see it was abdominal fat, for example, uh, as a really I'm saying, I want to perform blood monitoring, not any other abdominal uh, organ. So this model is actually about the adipose tissue thickness of uh, abdominal oh. yeah. Oh. yeah. So we must, with this model, yes, it's useful, but we must include even another model that relates the ATT of bladder with the Around the yeah. tissue. Yeah, so there's a lot. There's some work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Another question? Do you have any any other question? No? Thank you. Oh. Let's move to our last presentation. So the last presentation is entitled Artificial Vision System for Physical Activity and Practice for people with visual impairment, which be, will be presented by Ramon Eduardo Constantino. Mm 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Anasista. My name is Ramador Tortina uh, from Bioelectronic Session, Department of Electrical Engineer here at the Center for Research and Advanced Studies in Mexico City. And today I'm going to present the, the, the role with the name Artificial Visual System for Physical Activity Practice for people with visual impairment. So, as an introduction, around the world there are 2.2 billion people who are visual impairment. They have a lot of different needs. But one is the one that is the most important is the practice of physical activity. Um, why? why? Why we need to practice physical activity? When it's the, the World Health Organization reports that the low physical activity has become the world for leading risk for mortality. So the World Health Organization recommends that all people, including including lean people, need to practice physical activity for 150 minutes of moderate anaerobic physical activity per week, or 75 of minutes of vigorous anaerobic physical activity per week. And why they need to practice uh, physical activity? So the World Report Vision informs that children have uh, several delays in the physical and mental development because the practice of physical activity is one of the most important uh, characteristic that need to comply to their development. And in adults, uh, they found that the adults have a high rate of depression and anxiety, which can contribute to the isolation. So in another research, children, uh, they, uh, they found that children with visual impairment, with a high visual impairment, have a low rate of participation in physical activity. And with this, they have a, I have a result, they have a great development of overweight and obesity, and this is another problem that they need to take care of. And with this, uh, they have a decrease in the locomotor skills, and they need to improve this because they need to move around the world or around the house. And with this, uh, as a result, uh, they have a decrease in the aerobic capacity that can limit the development. And in, in a study using a cerebrometrics to monitor the daily activity uh, in children, they found, uh, pardon, uh, sorry, and, and adults, they found uh, they have a low rate of physical activity. So we can see that the children and adults can be affected with, with the low uh, practice of physical activity. So uh, with this, there is an improved, uh, there is an increased probability to, of fault through, through the limitation of the joint movement. This is because the tissues around the joints are more, more, uh, are more uh, stiffness. So uh, there are a lot of research that can, that have proved that rotary physical activity practice has been shown to have a positive impact in the children and adolescents, like a postural stability control. This is because they need to maintain in a postural for a long time. Maybe need to. Uh, we walk we, uh, in some place uh, for a long time. I mean, the locomotion, uh, this is a, a good improve because uh, as a sign person, they need to move around the world or they need to be depend they need to be dependent for the another people. And the, and the rotary physical activity uh, improve the navigation in familiar space like the house. And uh, there is a research that proved that the physical activity uh, improved the quality of life and the health. But currently, uh, the, develop the development of the device for visual, visual impairment only focuses on the everyday activities, such as reading, object recognition, or navigation. But the practice of physical activity is not uh, included in this device. So, the, the aim of this work was the development of a portable system that allows people with visual impairment to practice in the painting working as a physical activity. Uh, in this case, in, in a, on a duty track or similar environment with an economic structure, easy of use, and high autonomy. And considering the, the recommendations of the World Health Organization, to maintain a good physical condition, improve working balance, reduce of the risk of falls, avoid a sedentary lifestyle, and comply with the WHO recommendation. Uh, we propose the, device of the development of this device. 
This device uses a postural a commercial postural support. In this device, we put a raspberry can, a raspberry key can, uh, two push buttons, and uh, three vibration motor. We we can we we can uh, give feedback to the user when he's walking through the athletic track. Uh, the vibration motors are in the front of the device, in the left of the device, and the right of the device. This is to give feedback when the user is going to the left or going to the right, or when he's going to in a straight line in the in the center of the athletic track. The button can help to the user to give some uh, uh, to activate the system or to turn off the, the system. So the system was designed with four main subsystems. Uh, the first subsystem is the postural subsystem. In the subsystem, we can find the raspberry, the raspberry, the raspberry pecan, the battery, and the, both the electronic components. And the second hardware, the second subsystem is the hardware control subsystem. This includes all electronic. Uh, all electronic like a transistor, resistor, or another components to to, for, to control the motors and the buzzer. Ah, we use a buzzer to give some uh, signal to audible signal to the user. And the next uh, subsystem was the camera the camera angle control subsystem. This subsystem uh, use a Raspberry Pi cam an inertial measurement unit to provide the angle the angle of the user and we use a several motors to correct the angle of the cam uh, how does this work uh, with the MP, mpu 606050 we use the angle uh, provided by the sensor to correct the position of the raspberry pi cam this is because we need to maintain the camera in the in the vision of the athletic track to process the image that they take. And the fourth uh, subsystem is the subsystem of detection and control algorithm. This subsystem uh, process all image, and the subsystem take an image, uh, take an image, and after that we we change the space of color to the gray scan. And we define a region of interest, uh, the green box. And after that, we apply a canny edge detector to detect the board, the edge of the athletic track. And after that, we apply the probabilistic hope transform. Probabilistic hope transform is an algorithm to provide the as a output uh, the start point and the end point of the line. And we can plot this line. As you can see, uh, we have the athletic line, the edge, the lines of the edge of the athletic track. But uh, we have some lines that don't don't belong to the athletic track. So we need to process this image, these results. And this is the process. Uh, uh, first, we take an image. We pre-processing the image. So we define a region of interest, we change the space of color to the grayscale, we apply a canny edge detector, and after that we apply a probabilistic hope transform. Uh, in the same time, in real time, we correct the angle, the angle, the angle of the cam when the, the user is walking along the athletic track. And after that, uh, we need to process the image with the lines of the detective. And we need to detect the specific line of the athletic track, and we need to determine the orientation of the user. This is important because we need to give feedback to change the orient the orientation. And after that, uh, we have uh, orientation correction, and we can give feedback. So this is the process. Uh, you can see the probabilistic hope transform gives the start point and the end point of the line. We plot the line. We plot the line to to see how to see, see to see if this is belongs to the athletic track, and we can calculate the middle point of the line. So C one is the middle point of the one of the line of the athletic track, and the another athletic track we have see the C L two point. If we plot the line between this point, we can uh, calculate the middle point between this point, that is CP. 
We use a point, uh, RP point. This point uh, doesn't move. So when you move the cam, RP move with the cam. OTP move, uh, move, move to the right or to the left. Uh, in a video, in the another slide, you can see how this works. Uh, maybe we can confuse with this. So we, when we have two lines, we can calculate CP, but when we only with when we only detect one line, we can calculate uh, CL2, and with this we can give feedback and correct the orientation. So to prove the the the, the behavior of the algorithm, we calculate the time that they that it takes to process our image. Uh, we determine that the algorithm can run about 12 milliseconds and uh, can can give us 82, 82 frames per second. And to prove it, we recruit five participants. And we put the device, we cover the eyes to simulate blink condition. And we put this in the center of research and in an athletic in an official athletic track. And this is the the behavior. Sorry. Uh, as you can see, we have a pink point. Pink point doesn't move. Always is in the center of the image. When you are working, when the user is working, uh, in if he change, if he moves to the to the right, uh, pink point move with the user with the cam, but the athletic track move to the other to the other side. So if we move to the left the athletic graph move to the right. So with this, we can determine the orientation. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, we can detect the athletic uh, line from the, the edge of the athletic track. And with this, we can feedback. Uh, the feedback in, in the, with the, to give feedback, we use the, the vibration motors. We activate the vibration motor of the left, is the user is going to the left. And we activate the right motor see if the user is going to the right. And when he's going to out to the athletic track, we can activate the booster to give us some audible signals. And he can ask for help if, if he needs to use this uh, characteristic. And in the plot, here in the plot, we can see the behavior of the algorithm. We say the data, the data, of the data of the RP and TP that is the point yellow and point pink. So uh, the line one, the yellow line, is the distance between the yellow point to the middle point of the line of the athletic track, and the the blue line is the distance between. RP, uh, the pink point and the yellow point. So we determined that the that the thirty percent the thirty percent of the distance between the yellow point and the middle point of the athletic track is, is our threshold. If the user surpass so this uh, threshold, we activate the vibration motors. And if the user don't surpass this uh, threshold, we only activate the vibration motor of the center of the device. Uh, this motor indicates to the user that this is going in the, the stride in the middle of the athletic track. And if it's going to out to the athletic track, as you can see, we have a peak. The, this peak is between the distance, in the, between the distance, between the pink point and yellow point uh, surpass surpass this this distance the distance the athletic the distance between the center of the edge the, the center of the athletic track and this is an uh, this indicate that the user is going to out to the athletic track and we we can, and in this case we use a a booster to give an audible signal to the user. Uh, as a conclusion, the behavior of the development algorithms and the feedback from the system has been satisfactory. 
Uh, the system responds uh, at time allow participants to correct the orientation during a physical activity. Uh, this system is this system is open to improve uh, the implementation uh, of additional algorithms such as object or pattern recognition. We use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi have a lot of uh, capacity. Uh, in a future uh, world, we include testing the device with people with visual requirement under the same condition and analyze, analyze the, the, his behavior because we use uh, people with uh, emulate condition, blink condition, and maybe is with a uh, blink people can be different. So that's that's for that's a lot for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have time for questions. You have questions. Professor okay. uh, Go ahead. It's your This technology, a uh, kind of uh, people, is for what is the criteria to that, that people? Okay. Uh, to use this paper, the device can be used for people with. Is an impairment that but is what is, what is that is, is what I, I don't yes, understand yeah. that. Blind people, blind people, blind people, yeah. Okay, and uh, do you think this system uh, can uh, to do to to have to have uh, another application? Yes. Yes. Uh, for example. For example, for example, this is a part of uh, of a master degree. Uh, we apply another uh, algorithm, uh, probabilistic hop transform can detect lines and can detect circles. And we use a probabilistic hop transform to detect circles. We put some pattern in some circles and we give some uh, special characters to recognize, uh, for example, if you put a circle in the in the enter of the one building, we can give a uh, information to the user that is the the enter of the, the building or the extinct of the building, or maybe he can use to go to to move around the building, we can put some uh, signs. Yes, some signs. It's in. For mm -hmm. Like assistive, assistive technology. Yeah. For uh, Yeah. Uh, in uh -huh. this case, we only use to working because if the user run, don't work. So first, we work with the working as a physical activity or or. Okay. Thank you. Another question? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, did you make any test for uh, how does it affect the light, the luminosity? Yes. Because uh, I saw you test like in Peña during the day with a sunny day, but how does it work? Right. <laughs> we use probabilistic hole transform we can, because we can control the dimension of the light that it can detect. With the pens uh, of the canyon edge detector. If canyon edge detector can detect the edge of the athletic frag, probability of transport can work. So we do a lot of pro a lot of, anal a lot of analysis and we consider another parameters to determine the lines of the athletic frag, like the angle, for example. Uh, and in the, in the best condition to use this device is with a uh, Sony. You you can use this device in the night, for example, okay. because don't work. But if the uh, well, these lanes or paths are uh, with artificial illumination, does it work? Yes, it, it works. I don't. I we don't. We don't. We don't run tests about the how many elements do you need to use to use the device. Uh, we work with a weather with a 
Thank you. Thank you. You win. A couple of doubts sometimes. The, the number two, you can put the number two. Line number two. Yeah. No, number two. 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 Yeah. Be specifying uh, that 75 minutes per week, but in the number one, one is per week too. Is a mistake. Yeah. Is per week too. And what did you consider moderated uh, anaerobic work, for example? Yeah, more real people work. A virus activity is like a soccer. Like what work is a moderated activity? Well, for, for this research, it work. Yeah. Only, we only focus on the working as a, as a physical activity. Per week, too. Per week. Okay. Do you test uh, your system with straight lines only? Yeah, only with a story. Another question? Oh, I have one, one question. Uh, one of the things that you, when you make this kind of devices, uh, one of the things that determines the, the success yeah. is uh, how comfortable is the, the device for the, for the user. So what about the weight of the, your device, it is comfortable, it is heavy, or okay, because you use a battery, yeah. We use a power one with a 10,000 million torque that can provide a power to comply the 150 minutes mm -hmm. of working. Uh, we use a commercial postal support, so you can go your commercial postal support in many. In any market. Uh, this is especially for people with a mailing size. Mm -hmm. So, a mailing size or small size, for example, we don't work with, a, with another size because we need to put the wires around the. Well, yeah. Okay. The <laughs> but uh, I don't remember how many. Was it? Uh, don't surprise the uh, 25 kilos. 25 kilos. <laughs> 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 grams. Grams. But the people that use, uh, use the device, do they think that this device is comfortable or not? What about the comfort? It's comfortable. But the people that don't use uh, postal support, so you know, postal support, I think, uh, always, uh, yes. she, because you you talk about using this uh, kind of devices, kids, so maybe it's, it's not comfortable, it's very comfortable for kids, I, I don't know. Yeah, but we found that in some research, uh, children uh, tend to maintain the postal. Um, Right? I don't know how to say inclination. So one of the things that we uh, select a postural support is to correct the postural when it's working, when it is working. Because in the future they have problem that the post in some research. So why that is the why we use a postural support. Maybe we can change this to avoid the correct of the postural. So maybe. It's a very interesting project. Is is there a commercial device like like this? Like well, one? No. No, the device that are commercial uh, only only used to offer recognition or read some books, but they, I don't found a device that that can focus on the physical activity. Thank you very much. What, what, what kind of motor do you use? Vibration motor. Cell phone? Um, yeah, cell okay. phone. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I would like to thank you for being here on behalf of the organization committee of the CCE. And I would like to invite you to the other activities that we have in the Congress. 
So there are other uh, plenarization yes, sessions and also biomedical session if you want to go to the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.